Welcome to Elite 2 Pokemon TCG Weekly, where we shall discuss and review upcoming products and cards relating to the card game. First card in battle shall be the new Registeel for the Primal Invasion expansion, which hopefully we will be seeing in November by the time Shining Legend passes. Registeel's first attack does 30 damage for only 1 metal energy, which also allows you to attach an energy from your discard pile to one of your bench Pokemon. This is a pretty good attack, as it will let you do a decent amount of damage while at the same time allowing you to set up late game. Play him, put an energy, and you just did 30 damage while setting up your main canyon. His second attack is a little less useful. For 2 metal energies and a colorless, you may do 90 damage while at the same time heal. It will be an okay move where it only a metal and a double colorless, but having to attach two metals first means you have to set up before using a mediocre attack, which to be frank, can be put to better use elsewhere, unless you have a Metacross GX and can geotech it. The reason for the heal is for synergy purposes, which we'll get to in a bit. Next up we have the upbeat Alolan Raichu. Look at that carefree face. He has no clue I'm about to break down his spot. Guys, this card is pretty bad in my humble opinion. Tree Colorless Energy, you can use a Psychic for 70 damage to your opponent's active Pokemon, plus 20 more damage for each energy on the opposing Pokemon. That's an okay amount of damage and will knock out most basic Pokemon assuming your opponent hasn't already evolved. That said, if he ever saw you playing this Raichu, he wouldn't even attach energies until he has his team ready, making it a very poor choice of offense. All this wouldn't be so bad if it's not for his atrocious HP of 110, or a stage 1, which will see him being knocked out possibly the turn after he's played. His ability, Surf Tail, allows him to retreat freely when a stadium is in play, so you can technically play Age of Paradise to reduce damage by 30, effectively gives him 140 HP, that's a lot of hassle for what is more or less a cheerleader Pokemon. Our next guest is Type Null, and if anyone has played the game would know that it is Gladian's signature Pokemon. Type Null is for better or worse, a crappy version of Buffalet in Burning Shadows. His first attack, Armor Press, does 30 damage, plus it reduces 30 damage for the next turn, which is the same as Buffalet. What is different is that Buffalet does 80 damage instead of a fixed 70, plus it allows you to discard a stadium in play with 3 colorless energy, plus it has 10 more HP than Type Null ever has. The one thing it doesn't have, however, is the ability to evolve into Silver EGX, which is its saving grace and also the reason why you should run him. His secret rare form recently came out not too long ago, his evolution is pretty badass and worth the trouble of running his type null self. His ability, Gyro Unit, allows every basic Pokemon you have in play to have zero retreat costs. This means that all your Pokemon come with a free Float Stone, so you can attach a Fighting Fury Belt or even a Choice Bang without sacrificing their mobility. The best part is that Seal Valley GX is a colorless card, meaning that you can run him in nearly every deck. He is quite beefy at 210 HP, and his first attack, Turbo Drive, does 120 damage, and you attach a basic energy card from your discard pile to one of your bench Pokemon. Imagine setting up your Lele's or Gardevoir's late game without worrying about it getting knocked out. Its GX attack Rebellion does 50 damage for every bench Pokemon your opponent has, which isn't as good as his attack, but it does have its uses. Mark my words, everyone, that our Mohawk friend over here will be seeing a lot of play when he's released. Who combs his hair to be that majestic, though? None other than Gladian over here. He has a rather unique effect never seen before in a TCG, which is the ability to sub himself as a prize card. Now this is really a hit or miss situation, depending on your prize pool, you only have a 1 in 6 chance of getting the card you need, but if what you need is your GX or basic to get your game started, definitely put him in your deck. I really like his full art because it shows him torn between doing the right thing and his method towards achieving it, so even if he's not a vital per se card, he's still an awesome card for the collection. Our next card is one of the most useful cards I've seen in the game ever. That is Kartana GX, who boasts a pretty average 170 HP for a GX card, but his ability allows him to discard a special energy card from your opponent's Pokemon the moment he is played, meaning that you can disarm the likes of Garbodor, Drampa, Lele, Espeon, and so many other major players in the game. His attack, Gale Sword, hits for 70 damage, but you can choose to put him back in your deck along with all the energy and items attached to him, so you can play him, discard an energy from your opponent, play some DCE, then use Metagross GX's Geotech to hit for 70 damage, and you've just taken away one quarter of his special energy, left him hurt, and flew away. You can even try your luck with super scoops and take away more special energy too. His GX attack is beautiful as well. Take one prize card, that's it. For one metal energy, you can take away a prize card. It's so simple, it's almost criminal, as you will be the master of sudden death, and that by itself makes this card amazing. That said, it wouldn't be right to include Gladion without also including, spoiler alert, his mom. Lusamine is the new versus Seeker replacement as she allows you to retrieve any combination of Stadium and Supporter cards per turn. That said, you can't use the Retrieve Supporter the same turn, but if you run two Lusamines in your deck, you can indefinitely retrieve Supporter cards every turn. It's not as good as versus Seeker because you can't play it the same turn, but by allowing you to recycle your cards, it is definitely one of the better options out there to replace it. Hopefully her full arc will be as good as Wiki, because you know, glasses.
Next up we have Guzzlord GX's full art review this week. It has a slick blue and green spiral background, almost the same as Guzma's full art. This isn't the best card, but it can be quite lethal and very fun to play. For one energy, it will discard the top 5 cards of your deck and attach any energy to itself. Plus, its GX attack is savage, allowing you to take 2 prize cards instead of 1 if you knock out the Pokemon. So, if you manage to KO a GX card, this means instead of taking 2 prize cards, you take 4, which is more or less the end of the game at that point. Lastly, for the Pokemon card side of things, we have Alolan Executor GX, who is a stage 1 evolution from Executute, which we'll be seeing sometime in the future. His first attack, Tropical Head, does 20 damage to the amount of energy attached to himself to any of your opponent's field, making him an excellent sniper. His second attack does 120 damage and also leaves him confused, but it costs leaf energy and tree colorless. If double dragon energy were still in play, this would make it quite favorable, but in this meta, it would take 2 turns to set up and can be easily taken out by the ever prevalent Gardevoir GX, especially with the 2 times weakness to Fairy. One thing you should note is, despite it looking like a plant, taking a leaf energy, evolving from a plant, it is not a grass Pokemon, it is a dragon type. This means it does not hit for weakness on the likes of Greninja. Its GX attack is one of the more useful ones, as it does a whopping 180 damage, plus it allows you to rearrange your energies as you would like through all your active Pokemon. I expect to see him played in quite a few grass decks once he's out, assuming of course there are no more surprises left in Primal Invasion, which I highly doubt. So let's move on to the Pokemon products. Our first look into the exclusive product only Shining Legends merchandise is none other than the Shining Legends Elite Trainer Box, which is the closest you'll ever find to a booster box. The entire set consists of only 75 cards, not including the secret rares, obviously, and each booster pack consists of not 10, but 11 cards, meaning you get not one, but two holo cards per booster pack. This is the first time Pokemon has done anything like this, so collecting the entire set will be easier than ever, but still more expensive. The Elite Trainer Box comes with not eight, but 10 booster packs. The same as Generations, as well as a guaranteed Shiny Ho-Ho promo card. This sounds all well and good, but it also means the cost of said box will be higher than previous ones. Current boxes are currently retailing for 45 euros to 50 euros. I personally sell them for 40 euros if anyone wants to support me by getting one, that would be great, but these ones are looking to retail for 60 euros at the moment. I've always been a big advocate of Elite Trainer boxes, so this one should be no exception, but we'll do an in-depth review once it's actually out. The next product in our line is the Mystery Power Tins, which are essentially your run-of-the-mill tin boxes which are never seen before in Japan. It's unique in that instead of having the usual two Pokemon, like Tapu Koko and Tapu Bulu previously, we have three Pokemon, which includes our Marshadow GX, Nakrozma GX, and the shiny mascot himself, Ho-Ho GX. They will come with four booster packs, as well as an online TCG code that will unlock not just the GX, but also a deck in the online game. They will retail for the normal price of 25 euros if you go to the likes of GameStop or Smith's, or 20 euros for me as it should be everywhere else. Our next product is a tad special as it is the Shining Legends Super Premium Collection, which is a mouthful. Not only do you get everything mentioned earlier, but you also get a Ho-Ho figurine, a Rainbow Rare Ho-Ho exclusive to this product only, a foil Pikachu promo as well as two never before seen Shiny Lugia and Shiny Celebi cards. On top of all that, you will get an awesome playmat featuring most of the iconic legends, a special booklet with a behind the scenes look at the art of Shiny Legends, three collector boxes to hold everything, 12 dividers instead of four plus an online code. Needless to say, this is an amazing product and we haven't even opened it yet. Unfortunately, as with most figurine products, it will more than likely not show up on European shores, which is a damn shame, and I hope Nintendo proves me wrong in this regard. It is retailing for $80 on the Pokemon Center website, and if it ever comes to the EU, expect it to be around 90 euros due to customs, transport, etc. You would think that it would be cheaper, but when it comes to Pokemon, we usually get screwed in the pricing, as everything is printed in the US and brought here. That said, I would definitely be buying a few for my own personal collection. Lastly, we have the Team Skull Pin Collection. As with all pin collections, it includes a pin, obviously, and this one takes the shape of their album, five booster packs, and an online code. What makes this box special is that it will feature four reprints of Salandit, Salazzle GX, as well as the extremely popular Wimpod and Glissiopod GX, all with alternate art. For those of you who don't know, Glissiopod GX came in second at the World Championship this year, which speaks for itself. The pin set will likely cost 30 to 35 euros depending on your store, and is a great way to get your Glissiopod GX without relying too much on lucky pulls alone. So that's it for this week's Pokemon TCG Weekly. If you could, please consider liking and subscribing as that would help out a lot, and as always, have a nice week!